Well, if I could, I surely would Standing on the rock where Moses stood Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Well, Mary wore three links of chain On every link was Jesus' name Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn? Pharaoh's only got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep? Well, Mary wore three links of chain. On every wink was Jesus' name. Pharaoh's only got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn? Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn? Pharaoh's only got drowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep? One of these nights about twelve o'clock This old world is gonna rock Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Well, Moses stood on the Red Sea shore Smoked that water with a two-by-four Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan Pharaoh's army got grounded Oh, Mary, don't you weep Satan, he got mad, misses that soul he thought he had. Pharaoh's only got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Brothers and sisters, don't you cry. There'll be good times by and by. Pharaoh's only got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's only got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. God gave Noah the rainbow side, said no water but the fire it's time. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh Mary, don't you weep. Oh Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh Mary, don't you weep. Oh Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Oh Mary, don't you weep, don't you mourn. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh Mary. Don't you Rise as you're able and join me in the responsive call to worship. <coughs> Let us worship the eternal God. The source of all our life. Let us worship Jesus Christ. Let us worship the Holy Spirit. The Holy Fire that leads us. 
Come, let us worship the one true God in all times and places. there is nothing you can do to make God love you. There is nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, God forgive you.
Are you graduating from college? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you're sticking with it. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get my hug in. Now that it's legal. Great to see you. Glad to see you, my pal. I can help you. Good morning. I have to tell you that at this time last week, I was pretty nervous about Vacation Bible School. It was a three-day outdoor event that we had never done. We, this was all new to the Christian Education Committee, but we really worked hard to put it together, and I have to tell you, it was pretty great. It was wonderful. The little ones came and brought so much joy with them. It was just a week full of smiles and laughs. We packed a lot into those three days. Tuesday night, we had Andy the Armadillo from Texas Roadhouse come. The Kona snow cone truck stopped by. Uh, we had fun with the giant parachute during game time. We made some safari slime which the craft ladies are still mad at me about. <laughs> and they started learning their special songs. Wednesday night, we ate an unbelievable amount of pizza, made safari rain sticks, and the highlight of the week was a visit from the Poland Fire Department. They talked about what went on with fires and the truck and the department. They let each one of the children check out the fire truck and they did their part to make sure that anyone who didn't get wet with the water balloon toss got pretty wet with the giant sprinkler they brought, also known as the fire hose. So it was wonderful. It was just a great night, and the weather cooperated that night. Thursday night, we played limbo, which is an old school game, but they loved it. We ate some of the 400 Chick-fil-A nuggets I ordered. Yes, 400. When I called to order those, that lady said, excuse me? Uh, the puppet shows every night were fantastic. The kids even got to take part in the shows with their own puppets, so it made it even more special with them. But the most important part of this whole week were the Bible lesson sessions. All of the lessons this year were centered around the Lord's Prayer, which is just a wonderful thing to learn about. I have to tell you that I get all of the accolades, but this, this wasn't me. So many people helped, and it wouldn't have been possible without all of them. The Christian Education Committee has been working for months to put this together. We had so many people who purchased and donated items for us. We had people help set everything up. Um, all of the adult volunteers got themselves background checked with no problem. We took care of all of that. We even had some new adult volunteers. You can tell them, tell who they are by, by the zombie look on their face after <laughs> that week. It was all new, but it was wonderful. Our high school students really stepped up. They were here, helped out with everyone, helped out with anything they could. We even had our college kids come back and help. So this was truly an event put on by our church family. So thank you to everyone who was involved. As I mentioned earlier, the kiddos did learn a, a song over those three days, which Miss Nan and I were wondering if three days would be enough for a song, but it sure was. So Miss Nan, would you like to come up? Good morning. Good morning. Um, the song that the children learned is called The Father Loves Me, and we talked a little bit about uh, how joyful we are knowing that and how much we love the Lord the Father. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to call the children up in a minute, but first, we're going to have some audience participation. Um, I'm going to ask you all to stand, if you're able. And um, we have a screen that has the words on it, and it has a video. Uh, kids, you're going to be looking at me, because you know the video, you know the song, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but if you watch the video, if you want to just clap your hands with us, that's great. If the spirit moves you and you want to move with us, 
that's great. Uh, if you just want to try to sing, if you don't want to do anything, that's fine. But we want you to watch these wonderful children and join us uh, in the joy that we feel because we know that the Father loves us. So, I'm going to call all of my VBS kids up here with me right now. Please. And Miss Lindsay, I couldn't have done this. Come on, everybody. I know. I saw you coming in. Come on. <laughs>
conscious, may you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright and be strong. May you stay forever young. Forever young, forever young. May you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. May you stay forever young. Forever young. Forever young. May you stay forever young, forever young, forever young. May you stay forever young. to you in the stillness of our hearts, to hear your word, have it lift our hearts, and teach our souls to trust. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And now let us present our tithes and our offerings. The ushers will come to you. If I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above, if I could count all the blessings from the storehouse of love, I'd simply ask for a favor of him beyond mortal king, and I'm sure that he granted again. I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day with all the troubles and heartaches are vanished away and we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven with you many places of beauty we long to see here below the times and treasures have kept us from making plans as you know but come the morning of the rapture together we'll stand anew while i stroll over heaven with you
to stroll over heaven with you. I want to stroll over heaven with you. that still divides us, the continuation of COVID and all its variants, the safety and the security of our communities. We truly believe that you, O oh God, are among us and that through the living Christ we have peace, healing, less worries, and more resolve. You give us strength for daily living and courage for whatever comes our way. In all our trials and tribulations, may we remember your love and forgiveness, and may we take a moment each day to offer you our thanks. We thank you for our families, friends, members of this church, and every single person who in some small way has made a difference and taken the time to speak a kind word. We thank you for the completion of another great vacation Bible school. For Erica, the volunteers, helpers, church staff, those unsung heroes that worked behind the scenes, all of their dedication and love made it possible for us to do your work in this community. We thank you for all the children who came this past week to study and learn, to play, and to sing, and to praise you. We thank you for all those who live their lives by putting their faith in action, praying for others, giving care to those in need, being with those who hurt and grieve. We take time this day to pray for all of in need. Here is, O oh God, as we lift up to you and pray for Jan, Barbara, Bob, Twyla, Dave, and Tyler. We thank you, O oh God, for the day that is before us and the many reasons you give us to enjoy ourselves. We thank you for the summer and a time to refresh our minds, bodies, spirit, and faith. We thank you for scripture, the message of your prophets, the Ten Commandments, the fruits of the Spirit, the Beatitudes, the gift of your grace, the freedom to choose, a mind to think, the ability to never stop learning and growing, the capability to forgive, the privilege to love and the people that make us this wonderful church family. And we thank you for the gift of your son, who was, is, and will always be our master and friend. He is the one who gives us the courage to face right from wrong, good from evil. Grant us in all our duties your help, in all our problems your guidance, in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Through Christ we pray. And we pray as he taught us, saying together, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The sermon text this morning is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. This is the word of the Lord. Gracious God, be with us as we hear your word and give us a desire to live your word, now and always. Amen. I want to begin today by asking three simple questions. Do you consider yourself important? Are you indispensable? Are you busy? Do you get so busy that there just aren't enough hours in the day? Do you get so busy you can't even see straight? Do you get so busy that you can't even take the time to sit down and enjoy a meal? I like this last one because it's one that we all do. When we become so busy and involved in all the things we need to do, the thing we usually sacrifice is to sit down and share a meal with our loved ones. Instead, we, we grab a yogurt or a bagel on our way out the door. We eat at our desks. We eat in the car driving to our next appointment. We eat standing up while finishing our current tasks. Our meals are taken from a vending machine. And we are on a first name basis with all of the fast food restaurant employees. Sometimes life is hectic. And as such, we are too busy being all things to all people. We are too busy to relax, too busy to take five minutes for ourselves, too busy to even notice that we are too busy. In today's scripture, we see that Jesus and his disciples were working very hard to meet all the needs of the people. So much so, they didn't even take five minutes to eat. And so Jesus suggested that they go off by themselves for some quiet time together. Now today is a perfect day to preach this sermon, and I say this for two reasons. First, as one who has just returned from a two-week vacation, I have every right to talk about, and I'm now an expert, on what it means to have rest and relaxation. And second, it doesn't matter how important we are, how busy we are, we all need to learn the importance of taking the time and going to that happy place. Vacations, times of solitude, times to unplug, times to be one with nature, time to watch a mindless TV show or, or work a crossword puzzle. Whatever it is you do to unwind, we cannot survive without the ability to relax. Careers, stresses, responsibilities, worrying about paying the bills, being able to afford college, living in the future. At some point, we need to take a deep breath and just let things be. Now the problem with me saying this is this information is not new. I am quite sure that no one is thinking, what a novel concept. 
I never would have thought to take time out of my day and career to relax. I am so glad I came here today to hear that startling revelation. <laughs> my sermon today is not to lecture or tell anyone on how to find rest or solace from the busyness of life. But I am here to encourage and remind all of us that we cannot find peace from our lives without first finding rest in God. Professor Barclay calls this the rhythm of the Christian life. He says the Christian life is a continuous going into the presence of God from the presence of humanity and coming out of the presence of humanity from the presence of God. It is like the concept, he says, of sleep and work. We cannot work unless we have our time of rest and sleep will not come unless we have worked so that we are tired so that we can rest. So the Christian life requires that we find a balance between our humanity and our time that we spend with God. We cannot live a Christian life unless we are giving equal time to how we are living and how we are spending that time with our Creator in heaven. For that is where we find our strength, our solace, our peace, our support, and our consolation. So how do we spend that time of refreshment and renewal with our loving Creator? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to make time for God. And I'm not just talking an active prayer line. I am suggesting that we give God opportunities to speak to us, which means we need to be still and listen. We need to recharge by being in God's presence. We need to invite God into the quiet moments of our day. We need to create quiet moments in our day. We need to be in tune with God so that the spirit of gentleness can touch our lives. Once we can listen for God's presence, then we can actively serve God with our lives. It does us no good to actively pray and listen for God's voice if we are not going to put our prayers to work. There is no benefit in believing that God speaks to us through Scripture if we are not then moved to action. It is useless to seek God's fellowship and solace and then return to our old ways of living. Life is hard, relentless, unforgiving. There are pressures upon us to succeed, to thrive, to take care of our families, to provide for all of our needs. We are to be successful people and leave our mark on society and make a difference and be happy. We are constantly dealing with work issues and health concerns and the well-being of those we love. We try to get it all done. We try to be all things to all people. We try to be a source of strength and support. And sometimes we get to that point when we just need some time for a place of retreat. And it is in a healthy, strong, intimate relationship with the living Christ that is where we find our refuge. We all need time from the busyness of our lives. We all need to rest and relax and take a time out, go on vacation, seek the, the, the peace of our homes with our families by our side. But first and foremost, we also need to seek out quiet times of rest and renewal with our God. We need to make the time to be with Christ, to listen for God's voice, to allow the Spirit to move within us. And we need to receive that peace that only God can give. When we can find that rest in God, our lives become richer, fuller, more focused. We gain a confidence and our spirits are filled with God's love and purpose. When this is lacking in our lives, we are empty and confused. Today's scripture says, Now many saw them going, and they recognized them, and they hurried off ahead of them to meet them. And as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd. He had compassion on them, because they were sheep without a shepherd. Let's look at this. For a minute. Let's see what Jesus is saying here. When a, a sheep has no shepherd, it is affected in three ways. A sheep without a shepherd gets lost and cannot find its way home. 
But we try to live without Christ when we take no time to rest with God, we too will lose that sense of direction. Without Christ, we come to the crossroads and we have no idea at which road to take. We are like a child in a crowd that has gotten separated from his or her parent and that child quickly becomes panicked for they are lost without that special someone to guide them. With Christ we find the way. With Christ we do not get lost. With Christ we have Him to guide us. Second, a sheep without a shepherd has no adequate way to find its food or pasture. Without that intimate connection with God, we lack nourishment, a place to call home. In life, we are always looking for that sustenance. We need a reason to be filled. We need strength to keep us going. We require inspiration that will give us a purpose. Without refuge in God, we will find that need elsewhere. And in doing so, our minds will remain unfulfilled. Our hearts will be empty and our souls will be lacking. In order to be properly fed, we need the one who is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. And finally, a sheep without a shepherd has no defense against the dangers of life. It is defenseless against the elements of nature, the hardships of life, the beasts that are ready to attack. As humans and Christians, I think this is the one lesson we learn. Usually, we learn it the hard way. But we learn that sooner or later, we understand that we just can't survive on our own. There are too many temptations and evil forces and sinful experiences and dark moments and trying times to be victorious all by ourselves. By ourselves, we will collapse. With Christ, we will not Fail. Life teaches us that we need time to rest and to recharge. Christ teaches us that we cannot find peace from our lives without first finding rest in God. Now everyone cross your fingers because I'm going to turn on the mic. Okay, you can all still hear me? Kind of. Up a wee bit, there we go. There once was a young man, and he, he had a pretty good life because this young man had a very rich, very famous father. And any time things weren't going his way, any time he needed that advantage, any time he got himself into a spot of trouble, all he had to do was play that trump card, mention his famous rich father, and everything would open up and things would go his way. Now, he was approaching the time in his life where it was time to move out, go to college, and become his own person. And he wanted to do that as his own man. He didn't want to have to throw out his father's famous name every time things didn't go his way. He wanted to make this opportunity to develop his own person and make his own way in the world. So he decides not to go to the same Ivy League school that his father went to. He decides to go just miles away, moving out of the house, just to a regular, normal, accredited school, nothing Ivy League. He decides to use his middle name as his last name so that he won't be associated with his father. And then he does something he's never done before. He gets a job, not something that he needed but something that he wanted to do to experience what real life was about. And in his first year of school, he's doing very well. He never once in that first year has had to pull out that trump card in order to make things go the, the way that they're supposed to until the day of his final exam. History course, one of those survey courses where everybody needs to take the class in order to graduate. There's over 300 students in this class. And to make matters worse, when it came to the final exam, this professor was an absolute beast. He just loved giving the hardest test that he could think of to give. And the, the teacher gave instructions on the day of the exam, you will come in, you will all show me you have two pens in your hand, 
You will all show me the regulation blue book, and then when I tell you to, you'll begin your test. So that day came, they sat down, the young man became writing in his blue book and taking the test. He's about half an hour from the end of class, and he realizes that he's not going to finish in time. But he doesn't want to pull that card, he doesn't want to say, I get special privilege, so he decides he's just going to work through until he's done. So the bell rings and all the students are told to come forward and place their exams on the professor's desk and they start coming up, you know, there's 300 of them, it takes a while, and they start making this big stack of papers for the professor. And you can see the delight on his face because he's looking at all the scared faces of the people he knew that failed. He's looking at all the pain and anger on the faces after this exam and he's just reveling in the moment. And everyone files out, and 299 people turn in the exams and leave, and one young man is still working on his test. And the professor is indignant that he didn't follow his very explicit instructions. And so he says, young man, turn in your test, and he just keeps going, he just wants to finish. So finally, about 20 minutes after everybody has gone, he comes up front and he hands, he holds the test out, for the professor to take. And he says, you're 20 minutes late, you fail. Now, you don't fail, you get a zero on this, quote, on this test. And if you've got a zero on the test, you will fail this class. And you will have to deal with an F or retake this class before you graduate. So he tried. He went a whole two year. He tried not to do it, but he couldn't help it. He had to play the card. Then he leaned on the professor's desk and he looks him right in the eye and he says, do you have any idea who I am? And the professor said, no. And he said, good. And he took his exam and he put it right in the middle of the stack. <laughs> and he walked out the door. <laughs> Here's the good thing for all of us trying to live these lives. The good news is we will never have to ask God will never look at us and say, do you know who I am? Because God knows us intimately well. Every hair on our heads are counted, as Matthew says. God knows who we are. And in God we get that peace, we get that rest, we get that strength, we get that courage, we get guidance, we get protection, and we've got the one who fills us in our souls. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day and help us to do your work now and always. Amen. It's such a beautiful day, I'm going to let you all sit as we say together what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
from here as a people who are sent. Wherever you go this week, consider that God is sending you there. Wherever you find yourself this week, consider that God is placing you there. That the love of Christ that dwells within you can reach out and touch others through you. Know this, go in God's love, God's peace, and God's power. Amen.